and Naros is what you get when you let a potato and two pigeons design a frame. Kit-wise, anyways. He does actually look cool, but he is the rough draft submitted for a final of frames. So in this video, I'll talk about how you get him, his abilities, then a build that basically makes him immortal, and instead of tips, I would talk about how I would rework in Naros so he isn't the equivalent of really sturdy sandpaper. Thanks for 200 subs, this is your treat, and my torture due to the fact that I had to play in Naros. So how do you get Mr. Pocket Sandman? You get him by waiting for Zer, I mean Barrel Katir, for his once every two weeks arrival, and you use your 100 ducats to buy the Sands of Naros quest. This quest, you get the tombs, and you kill a certain type of enemy on that tomb, you finish it. Wow, you get an Eros. I haven't actually completed the quest, because I already have an Eros. Well, an Eros Prime, in fact. The reason why was, as a noob, I thought he was good due to the, some of the player base saying he's great, which is not their fault, because again, on sandpaper he's good, and he does work. He just has some problems. Thing is though, his Prime is vaulted, so you have to trade for him. Recommendation for me is to not get him, but you do you. Next up is his abilities, which is less of a mixed bag and more like a garbage in a can, which was something useful on paper. First, he has no shield. He only has HP. The only part is, Naros was released in March of 2016, and Nidus, another only health frame, was released in December of that same year. Not to say these correlate, but maybe someone learned from their mistakes. Head on to that, my last video was the Calero video, which you should check out after watching this one. Anyways, his passive, which when Naros dies, he gets sent to the forever box and he can revive himself by sucking on an enemy or his allies. It is very effective and helps a ton when he does- Oh, I, I forgot to put two zeros on these enemies. Let me fix that for a second. I need to definitely do some more stuff simply do this. Yeah, um, we forgot to let the passive scale. Next, his first ability, which I shall call Pocket Sand, is this animation, which binds enemies and steals health. It then does damage over time, which is where the life steal comes from. You can recast it and get more sand on enemies' eyes. What to do? You can also hit finishers on them because they're blind and they can't see you. It also does barely any damage. To add to that, it actually does true damage with bypasses shields and armor. You know, the saddest effects that do that. Well, damage doesn't really matter as a CC ability. Harrow's Condemned doesn't do damage at all. Harrow's Condemned doesn't do damage at all, but okay, his ability, this ability name is stupid. We're going with the pocket sand name. Pocket Sand is 25% of the damage you do from the damage over time ticks is stolen for health. While Harrow's Condemn is 150 shields per hit and can be increased with strength. Yes, I know shields are not as important as health, so that means you know they should be easy to get. But this does not mean an arrow gets to be a dumpster fire over here. Meaning he should have his lifesteal increase the power. So while the damage is stupid low, its lifesteal is essentially useless. And I have nothing more to say about Pocket Sand. On to Devour, or the Suck. Suck. Devour is an Eros' second ability, which you can tap and essentially put sand all in the enemy's shoes, allowing you to devour them for health. It also does true damage like pocket sand, but it does ramp up over time kinda slowly, though how much health you get is not amplified by the damage you deal. The main function though is an easy self heal. You walk up, you walk up to the enemy, devour them with your action key taking their health, or you can you know, press your ability key, whatever you do to devour your average Grenier Lancer. Once the enemy dies, it creates a sand shadow. These are not really important, they exist and then die. You can also just hold the button for devour and devour the enemy. You can also just hold the button for devour and devour the enemy, which pulls them in instead of just trapping them. It does have a range limit though, so you're gonna have to put on those range mods if you want to devour an enemy from 16 miles away. Not a bad ability. If anything, it knows his best or second best ability. Now, uh, Beyblades. They're pretty neat. They spin and are really cool. Well, would you like to play that? No, silly, not Caliban. I'm talking about Aneros' third ability, Sandstorm. A drain power that drains 10 energy per second and deals 500 slash damage base, which is nice. So same problem with damage again. You do in fact take 0.5 less damage, but you do in fact take 0.5 times less damage but at the cost of half your speed. I don't think the ability is bad as the rest and clearly goes for a couple fixes, like third place if anything. I'll get to you how I would rework him later in the video, but we still need to keep following the road ahead. Anyways, enemies also get put in a ragdoll state when doing this, so enjoy seeing a grenier getting yeeted. His fourth ability, Scarab Armor, gives you armor for health. At 100%, or when you decide to stop charging the armor, you can discharge it to do corrosive damage. It works as a little armor strip, you know, corrosive damage, 
Haven't really anything else to talk about this ability other than yay, free armor. Again, like Devour, it competes for first or second place. Now, I shall present my build for an arrows, which I, before getting to that, I ask you, yes, specifically you to subscribe. Free, and you get to see more Warframe videos like this. Also, Destiny 2, if the game didn't go from being wetter than an ocean to drier than the Sahara Desert itself every month. So yeah, free quick Warframe and Destiny 2 content. Stay tuned for all that. Now for my build, I have triple umbral mods. Not maxed out, but we're here to face tank everything. So having triple umbral mo mods is sweeter than a bottle and Jemima syrup. I have both rolling guard and adaptation. Adaptation for taking less damage. Rolling guard to get rid of status effects. I have an auger message here for duration, but I recommend continuity as the auger set effect is useless on an arrows. I don't want to put a form on this guy because I'd rather take apart an entire desk than do that. Carnus Carapus is for health and armor. Last mod is Hunter Adrenaline, which 45% of the damage on health is turned into energy. Pretty sweet, huh? Well, uh, here's the secret sauce to make you immortal. I'll put a warning label and say you're immortal at a certain point. Because I haven't tested this too much. But I'm gonna safely say you're almost immortal. The sauce is Arcane Grace. This arcane, and from the Eidolon Hydralist, turns health damage into a 9% regeneration chance for plus 1% HP for 9 per seconds at base. You get better health regeneration for each level, but base is pretty fine. And you also have life steal in your abilities, so run wild with the Narrows if you're using this. Also use Arcane Energize, but you can use whatever. I almost forgot to mention the Aura Slot, which is physique for health it gives. Wait, um, this person projection. I mean, I totally have an Aura Farmer to use and wasted, I mean, used one on an Eros. <laughs> No, I don't have Aura for myself. Ideally, you'll be using Physique for the health, but uh, a Corrosive Projection strikes again for my builds. Anyways, time to actually rip into this piece of sandpaper like a sand burger. Very disgusting, but... You know what? Some of you guys will think that's tasty. So this is how I would rework Ineros. First, Ineros' passive should be like Sevagoth's. Sevagoth's passive, when he dies, turns him into his shadow form, and you have to kill enemies to Sevagoth's shadow. Ineros would do, like, a cool reanimation effect where he looks like... The mummy, where he's like a mummy, where he's all decayed and all that, and bandages, all that kind of stuff. He would only have his two and one to attack. He would have 30 seconds to build back all of his health by devouring desiccation. Along with that, he would be immortal in this mode and have infinite energy. Your lifesteal will also be 50% more effective, making it 75% for his one and making his two drain health quicker. If you steal and regenerate all your health, you come back to life. If you don't, you die. That's just kind of how it works. For his one, you should do more damage base with both the initial cast and damage over time ticks, then allow the life steal to increase its strength. So, keeping at that same base 25%, but allowing it to increase its strength. Devour doesn't really need any changes, but the Sand Shadows could be stronger and do true damage instead of just whatever. For Sandstorm, I would change the initial cost to 50 base, increase the damage per second to 800 base, and give it a damage multiplier from multiple hits from Sandstorm. Let's say 1.25 damage per hit, so you hit an enemy four times at 800 base, 1.68, and that's 1.6k damage per hit, and slash tick should add more. Also, this is my map for anyone wondering, just in case you feel free to correct me. So, you would have a lower initial cost with the same amount of cost over time, so Scarab Armor is fine as it is. I think increase the life steal maybe. There's nothing really else, it's legit free armor, and that's kinda what it's used for. That's all I had to say about Neros, from his acquisition to a rework I had for him. And if this video was helpful, hit the subscribe button, watch some more videos on screen, curated for you. See you next video, guys. Toaster out, where I don't play Neros. Hopefully, the Destiny video. That'd be great.